Good morning, good morning. Happy first October Saturday. I'm Kim Hossitter, Crafting with Kim, and I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy this fun little pumpkin tutorial with, um, show you how to make it with clay. Actually, I'll get a little preview this time. This is a fun little cute pumpkin, and uh, it's really pretty simple to make, and I'm going to walk you through it right now. Well, hello again. Okay, so once again, like I said, I'm Kim Hostetter. I'm crafting with Kim. And um, I'm still waking up <laughs> Saturday morning. But we're going to go ahead and get this going. And I'm excited about sharing. Let's see who's on already. Got any comments? Melissa, good morning, honey. Thank you for joining. I don't know what coast you're on or time zone. It's 11 for me, but... I stayed up too late watching videos last night, so I got to get my uh, my cobwebs out a little bit. But anyway, yeah, so this is going to be a little fun clay tutorial. It's actually not going to take that long. It's a relatively short one, and um, so you guys can get on with your, your beautiful Saturday. I hope everybody's having good Saturdays. Uh, by the way, I am also streaming from StreamYard, and I'm in YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Crafting with Kim. I would really appreciate it if people would join in that and subscribe and see what I got going on over there. And also my Crafting with Kim page on Facebook. Uh, another little shameless plug for me. A lot of people know me that I've been doing a lot of versatility with painting and things of that nature. But I am focusing more on clay these days because I'm starting a online matter of fact next week i'm going to launch it heavy i'm going to be going live every single week i've got some ads coming out on facebook i've got a little promo video going on and what it is it's a um it is a private membership group on facebook where a person can go in and i'm going to be having monthly projects challenges uh we'll be doing uh, members choices all kinds of really fun stuff but we're going to be working with clay primarily air dry well mostly um, oven baked polymer type clay some air dry some plasters it's called um, mud clay art and um, it's only $15 I've got all the information right in the link there if anybody is interested that you can um, join in on that and get more information from me if you want but it's going to be a lot of fun and like I said the launching price is only $15 so check it out and let's have some fun I'm gonna do all kinds of great things okay so here we go enough of that promo Let's get started with the project. Actually, I need to switch this over because you don't need to see so much of me. You need to see more of my, my other screen. Let's see if we can switch it over here. Well, can I switch it over? Maybe I can't. Maybe I'll do it. There we go. I got it. All right. So, oh, I need to just switch back. <laughs> Give me a second. Got a little delay going on there. I got two screens open in StreamYard, so uh, this one might give us a little bit of delay until it kind of catches up. All righty. So, okay, what I've got here is polymer clay. Um, yeah, it's a big delay. It's kind of funky. Sometimes it catches up once I do it a little, once I'm on here a little bit. All right, so I'm working with the clay. Um, I went ahead and rolled it out for you into, um, with, you know, my little handy dandy um, roller here. And um, I usually use something like this as a guide. You put these on the side for the thickness. So uh, it'll be consistently thick as you're rolling. In other words, example like that. I didn't want to bore you with the whole rolling process. This is probably the most tedious, but it's not even that big of a deal to get it rolled because you have to get it to a certain, um, like I said, thickness for this project. And we're going to be working today with this. This is a Super Sculpey. And the reason I'm using the Super Sculpey is because it's very firm. And we're doing this particular uh, pumpkin project. We're doing the fold over idea. You can see here, these, these are like little flaps and they're gonna fold over. And um, you need to have something that's nice and firm that will hold up when you lift it up. So it'll hold upon itself, so to speak, because there's no armature with this. And so that's why I use this really firm clay. In the beginning, it seems like really, really strong. I mean, not strong, but um, 
hard to manipulate, but you kind of work it in your hands and get it conditioned and, and get it rolled out. And it's nice. And I, I really actually like working with this clay. So who we got already? Oh my goodness, ladies, you guys are up and about already. Tamara, Steffi, of course, Lisa, good morning. And Tara and Tamara again, ladies, I'm so jazzed. Thank you for coming on and joining me. And I hope you're going to like this little fun pumpkin tutorial. I figured um, it's time for me to kind of get on the pumpkin wagon. <laughs> I've been seeing everybody do pumpkins and I'm like, I'm not going to do pumpkins because everybody's doing them. But I saw this little cute idea on Pinterest and I thought, you know what? Let me give it a try. So here we go. All right. So the first thing, like I said, is you'd want to take your Sculpey clay. I'm sorry for the delay, guys. It seems like a little off, but that's because I'm on my second screen here with the stream yard. And I could change it around, but I'd probably mess everything up at this point. So we'll just kind of go with the flow. So anyway, um, you've got it rolled out to a certain consistency. Now, what I did here is I had just a general gauge of the size that I wanted to use, and I just had a plate from the, you know, regular plate uh, from, of course, Dollar Tree. I just go there and grab a bunch of cheap stuff. And you want to roll your clay out till it's about the size of the plate. Now, you can see on my edges here, it actually doesn't come all the way out, but it's right on the edge, and you're going to be cutting this away anyway. As a matter of fact, so I just kind of rolled my um, clay out to about the size of this plate because we're going to, be working it about like that. However, I'm not actually not going to cut it out here, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is, if you can see by this pumpkin, there's actually a pattern on it. It's kind of a cool little pattern. All right, and you can use any kind of pattern you want. You can use stamps. You can use what I'm using here. I'm going to use the same stencil here, but you can use all kinds of stencils. And basically, you're just going to place your stencil on your clay. First, the reason I'm doing it this way first instead of cutting out my pattern and then rolling it out and, you know, because you're going to put it on the roller again is that it has a tendency to spread your clay out when you roll it again, of course. And so you don't want to pre, I mean, you don't want to really want to, you can do it, but it's going to kind of lose its shape a little bit if I was to go ahead and cut out my pattern and then put the stencil on. So it's actually better, like I said, to do it this way, like do it before you even cut out your stencil and that way you can just cut out what you need. I'm trying to get it somewhat centered, although this is going to be on the bottom. You won't let it see it, as you can see here. So it can be a little off center, but, you know, try to get it pretty close. All right, so I'm taking my handy dandy roller here and I'm just going to roll it out. Now, with this firmer Sculpey clay, I know I love this stencil too, Tammy. This is a pack of stencils I got off Amazon. It was kind of like for doing tiles. Uh, it came in like a thing of 15 to do like various like Spanish or whatever kind of tiles. And I like doing a lot of home decor stuff. So I thought they were pretty cool, but I've obviously used this one a lot. It's one of my favorites. So anyway, like I was saying, with this super sculpy firm clay, you got to put a little muscle into it. You got to get it going nice and uh, strong. And one thing too about it is that, you know, when you're doing uh, painting with stencils, um, you know, you got to be careful about lifting them up. But with the clay, it's kind of stuck to it. So you can sort of lift it up and see if you've got your impression. Right now, it might be a little hard to see, but I'll show it to you in a minute when I get it. But yeah, you can kind of see the areas that you need to work a little bit more. Hi, Karen. How are you? Let's see who else we got. Ladies, I'm Jazz. Thank you for joining me this morning. I don't think you guys are going to be disappointed. This thing is super cute. And honestly, like I said, if you have any questions, you're not familiar with working with clay, you need to get with me, join my membership, or you can just PM me if you need the um, more instruction on this particular one. And I do have a little cutout uh, pattern that I'm going to be using with this, which I'll give you if you need. I didn't put it in my guide um, under the Painted Soul group, but um, I can send it to you. I was literally like scrambling to get this done this week because I had a pretty busy week. All right. Anyway, I think my stencil's good enough because, like I said, I'm going to be cutting out a portion of this anyway. I don't need the whole piece of clay to use. So I'm just pulling it off. You can see it's got a little stickiness to it. But it comes off. I'll get it off there. Okay. Now I can show it to you. You can see I'm working on a silicone mat too. The reason why is I actually got glass underneath here, which I do when I'm working with my clay sometimes. But I like using the mats. Actually, I can pick it up off the mat and show you. But you can see how it's got that nice texture to it now. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do at this point is even though I'm using the circle shape, it's actually not going to be in the shape of a circle, like the pattern's not. But I'm using this as my guide 
I was actually cutting out the circle and then recutting, but I got to thinking, I really don't necessarily have to cut it because I'm just using this as a guide for when I put my the actual pattern on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of lightly scoring this so I can see where the circle part's going to go because I want it to be somewhat centered. All right. You probably wouldn't even really have to do that, honestly, but I kind of do it as my thing. So I've got my little circle on there. Now here's the part that we're going to use with the pattern. It's basically like a five-point star. I guess I can see my camera go down a little bit. It's like a five-point star, and um, I just kind of did this on the computer. It was a circle, and I cut it out, but I kind of like this, too, because it sort of uses as that guidelines, these little lines here. I sort of kind of follow those into the circle idea. Kind of helps me keep it a little bit straight. It's a little off, but it doesn't have to be because pumpkins are organic anyway, right? And they're going to be a little bit wonky. You don't want a perfect pumpkin. I don't know. Anybody want a perfect pumpkin? <laughs> Uh, by the way, like I said, as you're coming on, if you have any questions, just give me some comments. If you're on my YouTube page, I would love it. If you could, uh, you have any questions, you can please subscribe to that. I'm trying to find my little cutout here. Oh, here's my fancy, fancy cutout tool. I'm using the butter knife. Now, you can use an X-Acto knife and things like that, but the reason I switched to a butter knife right with this because I've cut up my silicone mat several times and I still got on the silicone so I didn't want to cut it up. So I find actually don't use the serrated side if you're going to use a butter knife. Just use the back end of it and it cuts just fine. So all I'm doing is just cutting it out. Actually I will be cutting it out to that point. I need to cut that out. I just realized that that is one reason why I needed to cut the circle, but I can fix that. Now I know why I needed to cut the circle. <laughs> it ain't no big deal though. Let's see, I just did a little guinea pig try on test on you guys thinking, I really don't need to cut that circle out. I really just need to cut out this pattern. Oops. Off on there. If you get a little off on it, no big deal. You can always fix this. And then, by the way, the center of this, like I showed you before, is going to be the bottom. So we're going to flip this over in a second. All right, let me take this off. And then realizing that I do actually need to cut these parts here. Probably not really, but, you know, so we have done it in the past. So I'll just keep following the same directions that I taught myself instead of changing midstream. <laughs> Karen says, you made me want to play with clay. And I don't need another crab. Oh, my God, I get it. I'm so like that. You know, I've seen all the wonderful things that you ladies do. And I'm like, man, I, I love that. I love that. But it's kind of like, you know, when when Heidi was in Stu were doing their little thing. If anybody you guys know, they're talking about finding a niche. And I always said, well, my niche is the fact that I like to do everything. I'm just a very versatile person. I told Steffi the same thing. But then I got to thinking, you know what? I really do like working with clay a lot. And it doesn't seem like there's many people out there that are actually teaching it as a as a group, you know, as a regular thing. You can find videos and and groups and things like that, but to have an actual membership where somebody's teaching clay and you're learning, you know, beginner and learning really fun projects cuz I do uh not only like some really funky ones that you guys might have seen with the chickens and and things like that, but um this is um I, I do some functional ones too, like we'll be doing some bowls uh, all next week, by the way, I'm going to be doing, like I said, live clay every week on my personal channels. And uh, you can join in on those and see what I'm doing. But I've got a variety of different things between coiling and slabbing. This is called slabbing, by the way. It's just a piece of like a big slab and um, doing all that. So you'll see all kinds of really cool, um, very different types of versatility with the clay projects I'll be doing. So hopefully you ladies will join in that. And I did put a link onto my mud group on there. If anybody wants to, to actually go check that out, it's like I said, it's only going to be $15. So it's not going to break the bank and you'll learn a lot of really cool stuff. My daughter did a few years just for fun. Okay. I like your goat. You know what, Mary? I like the goat, but I got to looking at it and I don't like the way I painted it. It looks too much. I'm actually going to repaint it and I think I like it better. But the sculpting part of it is cool. I, sometimes I get a little crazy with my paints and I'm like, that's a little bit too wild. All right. So anyway, you see that I've got the cut out here. So it's basically like a star with the points cut off of it. You could actually make these a little longer if you want, but when we get the fold on it, it's not going to be that big of a deal. All right. So 
Okay, now what we're going to do is flip it over. Okay, now I'm going to tell you, I did the presenter's magic. I've got one pre-made. So this one right here, as I assemble it, I'm not going to follow every, well, actually the only stuff I'm not going to follow is what I'm going to tell you right now because I've got one made and I don't want to make three of the same thing, although they're super cute. Um, so what I, what I did with this one is because you can see when you fold it over, you've got the inside, but it's kind of hard to see inside there. Come on, Kim. All right, it's kind of hard to see. I mean, see, it's you can't really get in there too, especially if you're trying to brush it. So what I did is, uh, believe it or not, you can actually uh, paint your clay, your polymer clay, before it's dry, and that's really a neat idea because it actually bakes into the clay a little bit better than actually painting it after it's been cured and dried and hard. So. Technically, what I did with this one is, is you might be able to see, even though this is a flesh tone, some people might be wondering about the color of this. It's simply because I got a good deal on this particular flesh tone paint, uh, paint, um, clay, and uh, in the Super Sculpey version. So it has nothing to color because they use this for like doll faces and things like that because it's super, super, uh, it's super fine to work with. I can get a really, lot of good detail. But don't worry about the color because, like I said, you can paint these any color you want. You can even rub powders on them and everything. Okay, so anyway, like I said, I painted the inside of this first. This is the inside. So I just took, obviously, in this time, I took some oranges, orange and yellow, and just kind of put some on there. Here's a tip. Don't use your heat gun. Learn from experience. I wasn't using my brain. And I was trying to get this to dry fast, you know, because we always want to be quick with the quick with the projects. Well, I got to thinking this is a air this is a heat dry clay it actually kind of reacted a little bit and it caused my clay to crack when i did another project so i learned if you're painting the clay before it's baked just let it naturally dry don't put a heat gun to it because it'll kind of it'll crack and it won't look as pretty when you bake it it just kind of act, starts activating the heating process so tip from experience okay all right so like i said I would be painting this one if I was going to fire this one, but I'm not firing this one. This is just like show you guys how to put this together. So the next step, but you would paint it up. And while it's painting, uh, well, excuse me, while it's drying, which doesn't take long, really, set this aside over here, you need to make your stem and your leaf. See, I got a little leaf here. Got the cute little stem. All right. So there's lots of variations on doing that. Where's my little... Please say he's around here. I didn't put it away or throw it away. I had a little piece of rotatini pasta around here. That's what I actually used on the stem. I rolled it. You can use pasta. Anything to make an impressions. Uh, it's kind of fun to do. So, okay. I'm making the stem. Now, for those who have never done any clay, I'm sure at some point everybody's seen some sort of clay. This is, like I said, this, this is really, really firm stuff. I mean, you got to work it a little bit and get it going. But then, okay, I'm just rolling it out. I'm doing this. It's called coiling. Like I said, it always kind of reminds me of a cigar. When I was a kid, I used to like, oh, let's make a hot dog. <laughs> what the heck is going on with that? Robert's rolling up the roll top. He's making all this noise. Sorry. Guys. Robert! Robert! That is super loud, babe. You just knock on the door and I'll let you in. Okay, anyway, so... Sorry about that, ladies. That was some, that's pretty noisy. <laughs> All right, so you got your stem. Now, actually, this is a little bit thin. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. You can just roll it over. All right. And then just, you get it pretty much to the length you want, the stem. Okay, I think that's probably pretty good right there. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to kind of make it a little, I like them a little gnarly anyway. I think that's good right there. Cut that off. Now, on the stem itself, I've got um, a couple different things that you can do. I had my little piece of pasta. I can't find it, but I had like a little piece of rotatini pasta, and I just literally rolled it across here. But another quick thing that you can do is you can just score it, get a little texture on it, just kind of score it a little bit. Can you guys, let me move over here so you can see that. Okay. So I'm just scoring it. But the little pasta thing made some cute little designs in it. But once you twist it, and you don't have to twist it either, but I kind of like it a little bit gnarly, so I put a twist on mine. 
Okay, let me see. I think I'll use this as my end point, honestly, because I want to twist it a little bit. Kind of make it look like a funky little stem. You see there? And then I'm going to make on the bottom, I want to press it down because you're going to have to have something for it to stick to on the clay. I mean, on the uh, pumpkin itself. So you want to make like a little base for it, is what I'm saying. Okay. Let's see. We've got any more comments here? All right. Okay, so there, that should be pretty good. Just like a little flat base and you'll be able to add that to your pumpkin when you're done. Okay, oh. now the next thing that we need is, um, leave it up. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is take a piece of this clay that I already cut out. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's got the impression on the bottom from what we already cut out because you're not gonna see it. You're just cutting out a leaf. Now, on the leaf, you can actually just draw it out and do it yourself, or you can, uh, I have to have this little funky little leaf cut out. Ooh, under my mic. It went out. That's weird. Okay, sorry about that. That's odd. I don't know what happened. Anyway, so um, I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And all I'm doing is basically using it as a shape cut out, but it's so easy just to cut out your own shape of the leaves. I'm sorry for all that noise, ladies. I guess he didn't realize I was live. He, I have a she shed shop, and he put up the roll top on that instead of using the side door because it was locked. So my bad. I'll have to get on him about that. Anyway, all right, so why is my light going out? What is going on here? There must be something going on with my light, guys. Maybe it, the bulbs get ready to burn or something. I don't know. It's kind of odd. Another technical difficulty. Oh, maybe it wasn't plugged in enough. Okay, now we're back in business. So here we go. Here's the little leaf. And it's just a shape. You can do any kind of shape of leaf you want. I just happen to make it easy on myself by using this. Once again, you can take a exacto knife or just your straight butter knife. Um, turn it on the side that doesn't really have the impressions. If you need to smooth something out, you can do it with your finger. Another quick tip to get fingerprints off it with polymer clay take a little bit of cornstarch and just use the cornstarch with it and it'll just make it really nice and smooth but you also can use one of these this is actually just the back of a spatula I mean the uh, I took the stem off the spatula and I used this to smooth it out really nice uh, they also have you know the little cake uh, decorator spatulas that you can use too just and they make mud tools for it but hey this is a buck as opposed to eight bucks so I figured I'd use this one instead I am so sorry about my light. I'm telling you it's going out. I got to figure out what's going on. All right, so here we go. Um, I can't believe I'm having all these technical difficulties right now. So what I'm going to do is just do my stem down the center. You can see I'm just drawing my stem. You don't make sure you don't cut go through the whole thing. You just want to kind of put an impression on it. And then my little veins. Make some sort of like little leaf. You can make the leaf as thick or as thin as you want it. I mean, you don't want to make it much thinner than this. I mean, this is pretty thin. Um, my other ones, I think, were a little bit thicker. But it's basically the thickness of your of your pumpkin anyway, of your pumpkin sides. Okay, let me get this clay out of the way. And I'm going to show you how we put this puppy together. Oh, you guys are going to come. You know what I did? I just gnarled up my, <laughs> but still looks good. <laughs> I gnarled up my stem and my little ball of clay. All right, see, no harm, no foul. It's nice and pretty again. It's a gnarly stem anyway. Okay. That out of the way. Now, here's the trick. This is a sort of kind of tricky, but not really once you see how I do it. But you do need to work your hands a little bit in there. Um, the best way, because see, uh, most of these, like I said, I, I found this interest on, of this interest, this, this idea on Pinterest. And, um, you know, of course, I borrowed it with my own little touch to it. But most of them are using what I do believe is not polymer baked clay. They're using actually like um, mud clay, that ceramic clay that you would cut and bake. And it's a lot heavier and a lot denser and it holds up. So these ones do obviously hold up, but I'll show you how um, I figured out how to do it. All right. So once this is dry inside, you got your paint dry, then you're going to attach your what's going on here. Got a little blip there. Okay, make, every, make sure everything looks good on your stencil side before you turn it over because once you start putting it together, you don't want to press on it too much. 
All right, so here we go. So just take a flap, okay? And then you're gonna take another flap, okay? And what I did is I kind of pressed it together a little bit in the center. It's gonna be a little, you know, wonky, but that's gonna get covered up, okay? All right, then you're gonna take another flap and you're gonna fold that flap over. Same kind of thing. I'm kind of doing it on the edge, but I'm kind of getting them to stick together. And as I'm doing it, you can see I'm kind of holding it up a little bit. I mean, you can manipulate it somewhat with your hands um, as you're working it too, but you kind of want to keep it so it's held up a little bit with finger inside. Okay, and then fold this one over. You know, there's some of them have that where they're all going to be a little bit different. You're going to have a little bit of gap. Uh, the first one I did here. You can see it's got a little bit more because I was sticking my finger in there, but I learned a trick to do instead, and I'm going to show you that on the last one. So once again, I'm sticking this one together. It's kind of going inside with my finger and then poking on the top with my finger, okay? And then on the last one, this gets a little tricky because, like I said, to save it so you don't have a lot of your flaps looking, I took a popsicle stick. And, of course, it's going to be a little bit open, but you can sort of fix that. And we're going to fold that one over. I got the popsicle stick inside there is a substitute for my finger. And then I'm just kind of pressing that down too. Actually, let me press it down a little bit more. Okay. And you get it sort of like that. Okay. And then that from that point on, you can kind of work it a little bit. Actually, I don't care for that one. I'm going to make it a little bit different. I'll bring it over a little bit more. Let me get my popsicle stick in there. Okay. Now, here's another little tip, too, that I'm going to use. If you feel like, I mean, this stuff sticks to itself pretty easily, especially after it's fired. It really won't come loose. But see, there's your basic um, pumpkin shape. It's kind of cool, huh? All right. At that point, like I said, we've got all our, uh, what I was going to say is you can use some of this, which is what I'm getting ready to use right now. This is a type of glue for Sculpey, and um, it works basically like glue. You just put a little bit on, and it fires, and it, it keeps everything in place. So for the top pieces, so I don't have to do a lot of pressing with them, you know, like squeezing because it's gonna you're going to lose your shape of your little pumpkin here, is I just put the glue on it and glued a little bit on. Actually, let's see. I'll put this on first. I guess. So I'm just taking a little bit of this glue. It almost just looks basically like Elmer's glue. And I'm situating my, um, what you call it, where I want it. I find that I like to kind of keep that uh, popsicle stick inside until I get it secured the way I want it. And you can still do like this too. It does have a tendency to want to droop a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to show you, I got a little tip that I did too when I when I fired it to kind of help it give it shape a little bit. I thought about putting like a little piece of armature of aluminum here to kind of lift it a little bit more. But um, actually this last one that I did that I'm going to start painting in a second worked pretty good without it. So I figured, you know what, I'll just leave it like that. So I've got the stem on and you can kind of like press that down a little bit more if you don't want it to look like it's like raised up so much you can put a little pressure on it but you don't want to put too much because you don't want to lose the shape of your pumpkin now I'm just going to put the stem on Can everybody see that okay and like I said I can kind of manipulate the stem everywhere you want it looks great thanks Steph it'll look even better when it gets painted which I'll do the presenters magic here in a second <laughs> all right so once again I'm putting some glue on the uh, leaf right here. Oop, if I can pick it up. Oh, I just got glue all over my silicone mat. No worries. All right. So, and of course, you're, you know, you can kind of bend your, um, you can put more than one too. If you want to put more than one leaf on there, you can definitely do that. I probably wouldn't put more than two though, because it might what cause the, uh, causes to droop down a little bit more. But see, I literally just laid it on there. I didn't put any pressure at all uh, with that because I don't want to press it down on there. It'll, it'll glue on. So there you go. That's your base. That's how you assemble it. Okay. That, that at this point, what you do with it is you're going to want to put it in your oven and bake it for like, I put it on 30 minutes, 275 with this particular thickness and everything. So here's a trick that I learned though, is I wanted it to kind of keep a little bit more shape, I thought. And so I set it inside this bowl and I think it helps a little bit. I just got a, you know, cheap bowl. You know, you can heat up the glass and because this is such a low temperature. And so, like I said, I just stick it right inside that bowl and put it on a cookie sheet and bake it. And then when it's nice and um, dry, you take it out and there you go. And then you've got, 
do, 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 do. presenters magic <laughs> okay so this one i fired last night like late last night and i got that one done and this is the one that i'm going to put the paint on so you'll see how we paint it okay so how do we do that i can get all the clay madness out of here so you can see this one it's i'm gonna do this this other one in a blue tones just because i like the blues of what i've been seeing and something different besides using the oranges but i used a combination of just an orange and a yellow and just did a first coat on this um which i'll be doing with the blues but um you'll see the aging process here so it'll it'll bring out the um the stencil pattern on this when you use the <clears throat> the antiquing gel that i'm going to use so first step okay just like painting ceramics you want to put a base coat on all right and depending oh here's my little rolled teeny it was underneath my my um paint so what i did with i did the other stem i literally just like rolled this over the stem and gave it a little funky texture to the other ones so and then i put a twist on it after that but there's lots of different ways to do that okay i don't need that right now i do need my blue paint so i'm going to start painting the bottom first and you know it's like okay well you got to wait for that for dry but now that here's the thing now that this is nice and hard and cured i can actually put the heat gun on it to, to speed the process up so let me see let me just grab this guy here my little three quarter inch flat brush you can use pretty much any kind of brush you want sometimes when you're doing ceramics i like to use gnarly brushes because they get in the nooks and crannies but for now i'm just gonna put a little base coat of this on here like I said, I'm going to age it down. You see how when you put that, start putting that paint on, how it brings out that stencil pattern. You see it so much better. And metallics work really great with these too. All right, so I'm going to put a little dry dry on that. It's the bottom, so I don't really care how it looks too much. But, you know, I just, just want to get a little paint on it. Give me a sec. Everybody doing okay this morning? Everybody awake and got something fun going on? Anybody else actually want to try this idea? I'd be curious if you do want to try this pumpkin and uh, put your version in there. And like I said, you can ask me questions, comments, or and even if you're not particularly interested in joining up with my clay group, maybe you know somebody else that might be. So, uh, and like I said, it's just something fun and different, you know. I know we all do a lot of things, but clay, even though we might have a lot of projects going on, the one thing I've learned about clay, clay is something that you can learn to um, integrate into your other crafties or even painting and things like that, mixed media. It's really good for all that. So, you know, learn a few things about clay, and I'm going to teach you a lot of beginner stuff, and then, you know, we're just going to have a blast. Anyway, okay, so like I said, of course, you know, I'm not worried about if I get a little bit on the stem. I'm using acrylic paints, the uh, the uh, Deco Art of Paints, so I'm not too worried about, um, you know, because I can always go over it, is what I'm trying to say. Just like you would if you're painting a canvas or a card or anything else. Okay, now, like I said, on this initial one, this inside, I actually painted it the same um I'm trying to say the same um, orangey tones because I was thinking I was going to paint this one similar to the one that I showed you for my sample. But I got to thinking, no, you know what? But it, you know, you can barely see the inside anyway. I just think it looks a little bit cleaner. So I, I would have done blue on the back side of this one, you know, this coloring or the turquoise, aqua, whatever you want to call it, inside there just to have a little color inside there. Okay, so, so I'm doing nothing right here but just getting that first coat on. And is everybody ready for this fall? October is changing a little bit in Florida. Less humidity, still warm, but but it's nice. I like this time of year, actually, in Florida, because it's probably one of the cooler times. You know, between October and January are nice, nice, nice. It's not too bad in January. In February, it's just a little bit more nippier than I prefer, because I like warm weather. Okay, so there you go. I've got that guy on right there. And once I, you know what, I want to do this. I want to kind of take it down a little bit. I'm going to put a little water on here. So I didn't want it like really, I want it 
a little bit more distressed looking than this. So I'm going to take a little bit of this off. And of course, all I'm doing is dipping it in water, kind of pulling it off a little bit, get that kind of distressed look on it. I am going to put the um, antiquing gel on it, which is going to take it, make it more darker, but then I'm going to lighten it back up a little bit too. So anyway, realizing that I wanted to do more of a wash on it than what I did. Get that little spot there. Nelda, hi Nelda. Have you ever used air dry clay? Yes, I have. I will pros and cons. Thank you for that question because it is a difference. I'll tell you straight up. I honestly, it, it, when you're working with polymers, you'll learn to find that they're very user friendly. Um, I've actually worked with ceramic clays and I've been on a pottery wheel. Um, that's a little bit more of a technical challenge there, but I've done it. I've actually worked with slab with ceramics and, um, you know, those are basically, they're not totally air dry, but long story short is those are really messy because it's, it, it gets on your hands and it's stickier if you don't mind all that. But that's why I chose to work with polymer clays. Number one is because they're accessible to buy. They're easy. They're user friendly and you can use it in your oven often thing, but air dries honestly really aren't my favorite. It depends on what kind of air dry clay you're using too. The DOS works pretty good, but you'll find when a person uses polymer clays as opposed to air dry, it's like night and day. Um, the polymer clays are so much more um, pliable to work with and, and they don't dry out like when you're working with them because sometimes when you use that, even the Sculpey air dry clay, I don't like. I've got some. And it's just a pain in the rear compared to working with the polymers because they're flexible, they move around, you know, and it, they're just a blessing compared to the air dries, in my opinion. Uh, but there are some other air dries out there. And then, like I said, when air dries get dry, you put a little water on them, you have a sponge there, there and kind of get them wet and everything, but they just dry out too darn fast for me to what you want to do. And these, you can kind of, you can leave this sit overnight and come back to it, you know, the one that I just made, and then work it whenever you're ready to, to dry it up. So... I hope that kind of answers your question a little bit. Thanks, Steph. She put a link up there to my Crafting with Kim. At the very top of the comments, ladies and gents, um, I did put a mud clay art. I put my link up there to that if anybody wants to go there. Basically, what that is is the sign-in uh, landing page. tells you a little bit about what we're going to do, but you can also PM me if you're still not sure. And uh, I'm not linking it to the membership site because that's actually a private group. I've got a lot of things already set up in there. I've got some tutorial videos, some intro stuff, and then um, I've got like projects of the month. That's all ready to go for the people that actually sign up for the membership. So, okay. So I've got the first code on here, as you can see. All right. And what am I going to do now? I need my, like I said, this, I've used this before. I haven't bothered to go get any, but this is a wax version of a um, antiquing gel. It's your, um, we call them chalk paints version, the Waverly from Walmart, nothing special. But I like to do this. I don't do it with everything clay-based, but in this, it just really draws out the, um, it gives it that real nice age look for starters, and it draws out those um, patterns even more on the stencil. So I kind of like do a little section at a time, and I'm getting on the sides there too. You know, age those down. I don't let it totally go around the whole thing because I think it kind of dries too fast for me because I don't want it to be super, super um, dark. Is I'll take like a little section and then I'll just kind of wipe it off right away. And you can kind of dab wipe, you know, you know ever how much you want to put on there or not. But you're, you are kind of going for that aged effect, that distressed effect. So you want to make sure you get it in all your little nooks and crannies. And you can actually want to switch my gnarly like this I got this funky round brush that's kind of beat up and I like to use that when I do this because I can get in all the little areas there that you can't really get with the flat brush so well but like I said I just kind of wipe it off as much as you want see that and then I actually got to go back over and do like a little bit of touch highlight touch on the top of it this does get a little bit of sheen too even once it's dry so that took off a little bit of the actual paint because I had already taken that off, but we're good. You want to get it up around those nooks and crannies here. My battery's running low. Hold on, guys. I didn't realize that I didn't plug my laptop in. I don't have that fixed in two snaps. There we go. <laughs> Almost lost you. 
I'm running off my laptop and I didn't realize I didn't plug my battery in. Okay, so here we go. Painting that up again and wiping it off. I really like the color of this one. I do like the blue. Does anybody else like the blue? Or do you like the, the, per, the uh, not the purple, but the, um, the uh, pumpkin orange better? You like the orange? Robert, of course, said the pumpkin needs to be a brighter orange. And I was like, oranges and squash come in a lot of colors. So, you know, and we know that they even come in blues, right? We found that out. And I do love the blue. It's one of my favorites. No way, this brush is too small. I'm realizing I do need my larger brush because it's a lot faster. Okay. Oh, I forgot to paint my uh, the other two so I could, but it don't matter. What order you really do it in. Okay. So pat that down, get that painted. All right, I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back and touch that up. Like I said, make sure you get, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of the camera. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I have a tendency to do that, right, Stephanie? <laughs> get to thinking and not looking at the camera. All right. So, yeah, just get in there and get as much as you can. It's okay to live it, live it a little bit darker. I think they will go together great. Love the blue. Yeah, the blue is really, really super pretty. All right, so now you can actually just paint it all one color. You know, you don't have to paint your stem and your and your leaf a different color. It looks kind of cool like that too. But I kind of like the the you know the variation of the color. So I am going to go ahead and do a brown and the green on my stem. I'm going to do the leaf first, I guess. I'll just throw the leaf together. And I've just got a basic like you know forest green, any kind of green tone you want, like a dark green. And I'll throw a little bit of light citron or something on top of it. But you want to make sure you get down in those little um, vein areas with this. You pick a smaller brush if you want, you know, whatever brush size brush you need to use. You know, it's funny because as everybody knows, if they've watched me, I like to do artifacts. And I know a lot of people have already talked about pumpkins and then pumpkin things. So I was trying to think of something totally off offhand as far as pumpkins. I got a little spot there that I missed, but it don't matter. I'm going to go back over it anyway. Um, and I was thinking, okay, are there any like songs or um, movies that have references to pumpkin? And the only two things I could come up was the Smashing Pumpkins and the Pumpkinhead movie. <laughs> so I don't know. Hi, Melanie. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. So I'm talking about like anybody know anything about like pumpkin related stories or pumpkin except for cinderella i guess her coach turned into a or the pumpkin the pumpkin turned into a coach is what it was and then turned back into a pumpkin so i'm trying to think of all the things that the pumpkins are mentioned in in media that green's pretty dark compared to the other one i think i'll put a little light on it something but i get the brown on there and it changes somewhat too all right there we go that helps it a bit I'm lighten this up Okay. All right, we'll let that puppy dry. Now I'll do my brown. Love the colors you're using. I know, didn't they turn out good? The first one I did, Melanie, I don't think you saw it, but I did this one and like the orange tones. And I just took a little orange and yellow and blended it together. And it turned out cool too. But I really thought, you know what? I love this aqua, which I know a lot of people do. So I figured I'd give that one a try. And it is turning out pretty darn cool. And I'm not even done with it yet. All right, let me go ahead and paint that stem. I'm using basically a nutmeg. That, you know, nothing really fancy. This is just apple barrel paint I've had for years hanging out. So, so brown color. They are so cute. I know. I was thinking I didn't want to make a third one for my tutorial. But I'm thinking, well, even if I had a third one, these are stinking cute to put around or give us gifts to. It's time for me. I don't know about you ladies. Hey, let me ask you this. How many of you artsies, which we all are artsies out there, how many of you actually make gifts for your family and friends for the holidays as opposed to buying gifts? I do a little bit of both. I used to do a lot of making of gifts and then I kind of stopped because I thought maybe they're getting tired of the things I make. But, you know, um, I'm kind of getting back to it a little bit. I mean, for my grandkids, you know, I get them toys and crap. But uh, for the adults, I have a tendency to want to do something a little bit more on the creative side because you know, it's fun. Although my daughter would be happy with a, a wine gift certificate and we all be good to go. 
But yeah, I like to add a little something, a little touch of something that I've done too. So there's the stem. You guys see that okay? All right, there we go. Like I said, I'm sorry for the delay I've got on my screen um, with me working here. It's because I've got two screens set up on StreamYard and it's got a little bit of delay reaction, at least on my end. I don't know if it's showing up on your end. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's not on your end. And I should have some music running in the background. If anybody can hear the music, let me know if it's too loud. I'll turn it down. If you can't hear it, that's fine, too. I can hear it a little bit. All right. Let's see. I don't know where my lid went to my green. I'll have to find that later. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, okay, I've got my first coats on. And let's see. I'm going to pop this with a heat gun because I want that stem and that... Um, that uh, leaf to be dry before I put that gel on, the antique gel on this one. What's nice about this too, I think you guys can hear me over the little hum of this thing, is um, painting this type of thing with a distressed look, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know what I mean? Imperfections are actually part of the beauty of it. So, you know, there's a, there's some brown here and there. There's this and that. And you kind of want that. I mean, if you want it to look a little bit less aged, of course, you don't have to do it that way. But I just think it makes, gives it more character. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like the aged look? I do both. Make and buy gifts. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Like I said, I got away with it because I really didn't have a good place to work for several years as far as crafty and doing things. So um, I was basically buying stuff and give it to people. But um, you know, I've kind of, especially birthdays and things like that. Uh, my daughter's building a new house, her and her husband, and there's a couple of housewarming um, ideas. She wants me to do a porch liner for her, maybe do this mural on the side of her, back of her pool area. So I'm, I'm happy about doing that. So I got that one aged down on the leaf. And you can see you want to get inside the crevices. That's the important part with using this, this aging gel. Just get inside those little, that's why I use it like that, just kind of scrub it in there a little bit. And I could paint it probably a little cleaner, but, you know, me, I'm always trying to rush through things for you ladies so you can see basically what you need to see and not jab out too long. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is just run a little light color on top just to kind of brighten it up a little bit again. So... Where's my guy here? Here it is. All right, so, and I want to try to go as light as possible on this. I'm going to sort of like dry brush it. Hopefully, I won't get too much on. Okay, so I'm just kind of highlighting again. You know, and I can actually use my fingers if I want. Bring in a little bit of it back up so it doesn't look as dull. Okay. Some little highlights here and there and get it the way you want it. You can still see that it's still got the, where, um, it, you know, in the crevices where the stencil was, it's still, it's still there. That's kind of like the point of doing this is because you want the stencil to pop out. And so if you just kind of put a little bit of dry brush, I only dip my brush once, honestly, in a little bit of paint. And there you go. That's all I needed. I'm not going to worry about the bottom. You're not going to see that. And then if I want to do maybe on the leaf, just a smidge, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Like that, lighten that up. I'm gonna leave the stem. The stem looks good. The stem looks good. I love it. Aren't they cute? They're so cute. I know, isn't it sweet? And you can see it's really not that difficult. The first thing, um, there you go. There you go. Ta ta. Done. Done, done, done. So cute. So the first thing. Um, when I made the first one and I was doing my little test run with it, um, I was concerned. Like I said, it was actually this one. This turned out pretty good. But like I said, it was a little bit more open here because I was trying to stick my finger inside to hold it up. And it still doesn't look bad. But you can see this one's closed a little bit more when I started using this um, popsicle stick. I could get it in there. And you want to, like I showed you before, just hold it up there and press down. And that way... Um, yeah, it looks cute. And you can see the difference between the two. Okay, this is a little bit more flatter spread out. This is a little bit tighter. Okay, but they're all going to be a little bit different because that's that's what you do with art. Nothing's ever the same. 
I might add a little metallic. Absolutely. Yeah, you can throw some metallic in there. One of the projects, matter of fact, when I go live on Monday, oh, I'm going to switch my screen over. Make sure I got the right screen. Nope, I got the wrong screen. Do it like this. We can do this way. Okay, well, that's better. One of the things I'm going to be doing uh, on my, I'm going to be going live, like I said, every day next week because I'm starting to launch and promote my my mud clay art group. And um, I'm going to be having different little tutorials every day, something to do with clay. My very first one, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's going to be a metallic um, project. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be metallic. And like I said, I'll be doing coiling. I'll be doing um, the slab. I'll be doing some pinch pot stuff. And... A variety of whimsical and practical so and those are all free and that you'll be able to see that on my crafting with kim site and on my youtube channel you'll be able to see those so um yeah i would hope that you ladies will be able to pop in i'll give you the notices on all that but does anybody have any more questions about these clay pumpkins and is anybody actually going to try this like i said the one thing i would tell you is that when you're using this if you're going to do this you really, really, really need to use this firm clay, the Super Sculpey. Okay, there it is. If you try using like one of the, uh, the like a Primo Sculpey or the Sculpey 3, they're both um, air baked, excuse me, they are oven baked. They're a little bit um, more pliable. They're not as firm. So they're not going, they, they might have a tendency to droop on you more. You know how you have to keep it up. That's why I went with the firm one um, so that it would hold its shape better. So, and there is a certain way that you need to condition it. If you don't uh, understand what that is, it's basically when it comes in the brick like this, it's very hard. I mean, literally like, so, you know, you take, especially this one, you have to like cut a section of it off. Now I have a pasta maker, which I have hooked up. Actually, maybe let me see it over there. Let me, let me see my messy studio. See my pasta maker right on the end right there? And I literally run it through. And that super saves a lot of time. Um, and, you know, I invest. Actually, I found that at the thrift store for like eight bucks. I got a good deal on it. But they're only like 20 some bucks if you want to buy it new on Amazon. But they really, especially when you're working with the polymer clays, you can run it through and do it really fast. And then you, or the old-fashioned way is work it a little bit, slap it a little bit, and then use your, um, your rolling pin. You know, usually you use an acrylic rolling pin. But since I'm trying to show people how to do things in a thrifty manner, like find things, this was a buck rolling pin at the Dollar Tree. A lot of Dollar Tree stuff here. And, uh, you know, especially when you're getting going and beginning, you don't want to invest a lot of money. So the biggest investment would probably be, you know, a block of clay. Usually this type of stuff, it, you know, 12 bucks, something like that. And you can, depending on what project, you can get several projects out of this. I mean, for this project, I probably used about maybe when it's all said and done, maybe a quarter of this block. Excuse me, can't see the block. Maybe a quarter of the block is what I used to make this. So you can see you can get quite a bit for your $12, $13. You know, I look around and shop and I've got a, a thing set up on Amazon too, like a shopping wish list for the people that join my membership of where I've purchased some items. So you'll have that at your disposal as well. You'll get tracers and all that sort of thing whenever we do projects. So like I said... Yes, the pasta maker is a lifesaver, especially with the with the thicker clays. And it's just kind of fun to run it through. And then you'll still have to roll it out a little bit, but it saves your hands. Okay, so ladies, is there any more questions? Or if anybody is interested in, like I said, learning more about my membership, the clay membership, just get with me and I'll and if anybody wants the actual pattern for this, if they'd like to give it a try, um, let me know on that and I'll shoot you that as well. I hope everyone has a great Saturday weekend. Blessings to everybody, and I will see you later.